Good morning. Uh, it is Monday and it's actually a bank holiday here in the UK, which means it's a day off. But I'm in my office. Um, it's actually nearly lunchtime. Uh, but I'll come into my office because I want to cast on a new sweater. So the yarn I want to use is this one. It's a shop all six carat and it's a blend of merino and silk. And I wanted to knit a sweater in there for a while, but I couldn't quite decide what to do with it. So I've decided this bright pinky colour is really nice. So I'm going to use that. I've knitted a swatch. I've knitted a swatch in a different colour because I had a ball of that already. So that's my swatch. It's quite big. I want it to be an all over lace pattern. I am wondering whether, because this one's got like a big double yarn over in the middle, I'm wondering whether that's going to be a little bit too open. Um, so it's got triple yarn over in the middle. I'm wondering about whether to change it to a double yarn over, which means I'm going to have to knit another swatch. So I can't quite decide yet um, whether to go for that or not. So anyway, I'm going to start working out the numbers um, and while I think about it, basically. So I thought I would just take you through how I get started with a design. Um, when I design shawls, I quite often just have an idea, chart it out and then cast on and then take it from there. If it's for a magazine, then I have to come up with a um, submission so like an outline beforehand and if one of my sample knit is knitted then I have to actually write the whole pattern beforehand or at least most of it. Sometimes I'll send off like the first half of the pattern especially if it's a short deadline and then I'll say I will get you the rest in a few days or whatever. Um, but with sweaters I've learned from experience um, and mistakes that it's worth um, really writing up the whole pattern or at least planning out the whole pattern in advance and it's quite often actually worth planning out every size in advance because some that might work in the sample size which in this case will be my size may not always work in the other sizes the other thing I'm slightly worried about is that I am losing weight at the moment I've lost a couple of kilos in the last couple of weeks and I'm thinking if I knit it now what if I lose more weight but it is going to be quite a sort of loose fitting sweater so I'm thinking maybe that doesn't matter if I lose weight it'll just be slightly more oversized so I'm still going to go for it I think so I'm going to flick the camera down move the camera down my desk and flick it down so and then show you how I'm going to um, measure the tension on this swatch a little bit about um, some of the problems with lace stitches for an all over lace pattern design for garments and then take you through how I'm going to start planning out this sweater and make sure I also only have four skeins of this which is 1200 2400 meters I also which I think should be enough even for my size but I need to also double check I've actually got enough yarn before I cast on I do have another two balls uh, skeins of this in the yarn addict shop I think at least one maybe two uh, but they're a different dye lot and as it's a sweater it is better to stick with the same dye lot so I'm going to flick the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've angled the camera down at my desk just so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Um, so this is my swatch. I'm having slightly second thoughts about these big yarn overs in the middle, which are triple yarn overs. And I'm wondering whether I should do a double yarn over, which probably needs means I need to actually re-knit the swatch, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I'm going to work it out based on this because I just want to see if I have enough yarn. Um, and that'll be fine so I'm gonna actually work out the yarn amount first so on my laptop I actually have a spreadsheet um, that I can work out the yarn amount in so I'm gonna just um, I've worked out the width the size I needed for me so I'm just gonna fill in the spreadsheet I'll show you the spreadsheet in a minute I'm just gonna fill in my numbers quickly first So before I fill in my spreadsheet, I need to measure this um, and weigh it and things like that. And when you measure tension, you don't measure right to the edge of the fabric. But when you measure the swatch to work out how much yarn you need, you do measure it right to the edge of the fabric. Now, this tape measure is a little bit rubbish. Um, not tape measure, sorry, ruler. I prefer to use a ruler rather than tape measure to measure tension. This one is a 
Kath Kidson one I got years ago. The the numbers are starting to um rub out a little bit, so that's a bit annoying, but um it's the longest ruler I've got, so for now I'll just have to use it. And then I'm gonna measure the length now. This one's got points. I'm not gonna measure it to the points, I'm actually gonna measure it to the lower bit here. Actually no, I will measure it to yeah, I'll measure it to the lower bit. So that's seventeen and a half. And then I need to weigh it as well. So I've got this little tiny scale that weighs quite sort of small amounts. Okay. So let me show you my spreadsheet that I have for um I don't know how easy it is to see that actually on the screens. Probably not that easy to see. Okay, so I've got, basically, you need to work out, the way I work out how much yarn I need is I work out how many times that swatch will fit into the garment shape that I'm knitting. So if you have any shaping, um, like if the sleeve, for example, tapers from like um, wrist to top of the arm and things like that, it doesn't take into account that. It doesn't take into account any armhole shaping, um, anything like that. So um, it just turns each body piece of the front and the back of the body and each sleeve into rectangles so it does overestimate slightly but I've put in my me the measurements I need for my garment here then at the bottom here I'm going to put in the measurements and of the swatch so width of the swatch is 29 centimeters length is 17.5 and then it squares that and then weight is 9.771 I found this somewhere years ago before I, when I started designing um, then I'm going to change, so it's giving me the yarn the skein size in 100 grams. So that's saying that I need two and a half skeins and I've got four. So that's, it's rounded up to three, so that should be fine. Um, so let's save that. Right, there we go. Okay, so let's tilt you down again. Now, let's talk about measuring tension. The problem with measuring tension on... Um, swatch on with lace is that the lace can lie a little bit so whatever the um measurement is here so how much the measurement is the tension is for this size and this is 29 centimeters wide um it's if i'd measured my swatch before i blocked it which i didn't because it was really like scrunched up and horrible so i didn't bother um but when i've taken into account the growth when i measure it when i block it when it's this size when it's wider for the body and I'm quite big it may grow the rate of growth may not be the same I don't know if that makes sense but I do quite often find that tension for lace can tend to lie a little bit especially if you make a really small tension swatch so that's why I've made tension swatch that's 29 centimeters now normally I probably should have done a few more edge stitches what I've done, because it is difficult to measure tension, if I had a um, swatch in stocking stitch, I would just lay it down, put my ruler on top. I always use a ruler rather than a tape measure, and I would just count the number of stitches and rows to 10 centimeters if it was stocking stitch. That's very difficult when it comes to lace because we've got all these yarn overs and decreases and stuff like that. So what I've done is I had three edge stitches on either side, and I feel like I should have done five now, really. And I have um, put a marker here. So that you can see it. It's one of these like padlock markers. Can you see that? Um, I put that here at the beginning of the first pattern repeat and then here at the end of the last pattern repeat. And the pattern repeats are um, I did five pattern repeats, so five ten stitch pattern repeats. So between this marker and now it's 50 stitches. Um, I'm thinking I should have probably put one, one stitch kind of further in. Um, but I might actually just try and do that just to compare the measurements I'm getting. So um, just looking at my... I'm just kind of looking at my um, uh, chart, which is in my notebook at the moment. Right one there and then one two and then yeah. okay. my 
door is opening and closing so right i'm actually going to leave that now because i may actually re-knit this anyway and do it slightly different okay so i'm going to measure just between these markers but i'm feeling like i should put a should put a marker one repeat in from the edge 27 centimeters so that's 27 centimeters and that's 50 stitches so that is 50 stitches divided by 27 that's 1.85 times 10 is 18.5 so in my spreadsheet i'm going to just put in 18.50 for the number of stitches per 10 centimeters and then i'm going to do the same for here now i've got another pattern at the bottom here an edging pattern which i might actually do for more repeats of i just want to see how that fitted in with the main pattern i'm not actually going to use that when it comes to knitting the um measuring the tension so i'm going to go from there which is where the garter stitch edge is at the top to there which is where the edging chart ends and that is 12 centimeters and that is three hang on let me erase this, this pattern one, two, three, four, five, six, and on, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So that's twelve times three. That's thirty-six rows divided by twelve. That's three times ten. So that's thirty rows per centimeter. So here's my spreadsheet. But no, you probably can't see that properly, but. I basically up here i got my stitches um 10 centimeters and then it turns that into stitches per centimeter and then rows per 10 centimeter and rows per centimeter and there i add my 10 my ease which is 10 centimeters here i have all my on this side i have all my measurements and then on this side um it adds the um ease to the measurements that need that and then it gives me the actual measurements I'm going to use for the garment. So these are the measurements, the body measurements on, on this side. And then on this side, it's um, measurements of the actual garment. So it adds the ease and then it takes these measurements and it chucks it down here, multiplies it by the tension and gives me right the rough numbers. So like 98.98 .98 and that kind of thing. And then it takes it over here and rounds it up or down these are the numbers i'm going to use for my pattern so it actually tells me that i need 259 stitches um and i got 10 stitches in the repeat so that's 260 stitches that ran that's quite close so that's good I have decided to go with this stash pattern for now. Uh, I've written up the pattern just like a, a rough draft of the pattern, not the full pattern, but just like a rough draft. I have had a quick look to make sure that this uh, pattern repeat will and the tension will work across a range of sizes, and it will. Um, so I'm going to wind the yarn and um, cast on. And it's sunny outside, uh, so I'm going to go and get some lunch and then go and sit in the garden and cast on for this and I'll let you know in the next video how I'm getting on with it. So I've not written the full pattern yet, I've just written sample pattern, like draft pattern in my size. So I've basically just written what I'm going to do up to the underarm um, and that's it. Um, 
that's all I'm going to do today because it is sunny outside and I want to get out in the garden. 